So guys, have you gotten the Harley you've always wanted? And you go out and after an hour of riding, your shoulders are aching or you just feel all cramped up? Well, today we're gonna to talk about the Comfort Triangle and how to make your bike comfortable for you. Today's video is DK Questions and Answers number 11. And today we're gonna to talk to you about the Comfort Triangle. There's been more than a few times that I've heard somebody say, I need to get a new Harley. The one I have is killing me. We get asked these questions almost every day. When I ride for over an hour, I get an aching pain between my shoulders. What can I do about that? What are the best riser extensions for my bike? What seat is the most comfortable? Which foot pegs or highway pegs should I run? One of the most overlooked aspects of motorcycling is getting the bike set up where it's comfortable for you. That way you're not ending up fatigued at a day after a day of riding or if you're on a multi-day trip or a multi-week trip wondering why you even started it after going eight, ten hours a day for a week in a row and just being beat at the end of every day. There's a way to set up your Harley where it will be comfortable for you. Yeah, and it's very simple. Utilize the Comfort Triangle. We're going to go over the three aspects that make up the Comfort Triangle. And there's a link to a report on the Comfort Triangle below, but we're actually going to go over it here on the video and show you on these two bikes some of the things that we've set up on our own bikes to make them more comfortable for ourselves. So the three aspects to the Comfort Triangle are butt placement, foot placement, and hand placement. And it's important to go through each of these in order so you don't end up having to redo some part of it after you get something done. Have you ever been on a trip where you rode all day and you got to the place you wanted to enjoy the evening and you were so fatigued you just had to fall into bed? So the first thing is to pick a comfortable seat. Forget about your feet at this point in time, forget about your handlebars, just pick a seat that you are comfortable with. I used to take every seat and re-contour it, mm -hmm. put comfort foam in it and everything. And about 10 years ago, I discovered the Airhawk. And now I can just put the Airhawk on a factory seat, and that makes it comfortable. I don't have to send my seat off to get done or take it apart and put comfort foam in it or anything. The Airhawk makes it more comfortable. And then the other thing I do is I put a sheepskin on top of that, and that makes it a little bit cooler in the summer and a little bit warmer in the wintertime. And I personally run a stock street bob seat on short rides. It just puts me at a, it puts me back more than the stock deluxe seat did, which was more plush and had me in a more forward position. And we'll talk about leg positioning in that a little later on. But as far as the seat goes, uh, just because it's a larger plusher seat doesn't mean it's going to be more comfortable. Uh, the contour of the seat is key. So the first thing you do is you're either comfortable with the seat you have or look at maybe getting an air hawk or a sheepskin or some people use the beads. Get the seat that you are comfortable in. And most Harley dealerships have seat programs where you can try out a seat for a day or at least sit on one in their shop. But get a seat that you're comfortable with. And if you're on a sporty or a dyna, solo seats with springs are can be really really can, comfortable. and look really good at the same yeah, time they look good and can be really comfortable and that's what i run on my sporty one other aspect of seats is on touring bikes uh, sometimes even dynas and uh, soft tails you're going to find that you will not be comfortable until you add a backrest everybody's different don't hesitate to test out a different backrest and see if that makes a seat you have or a seat you're testing out more comfortable. I personally am so much more comfortable with a backrest. I know a lot of people can't ride any kind of long distance without a backrest and that's part of getting a seat that is comfortable for you. That's correct. I, on long distances I run the Harley hammock seat with the backrest and it works out great. This is a street bob seat, an M8 soft tail street bob seat. As you can see, it's low profile here and has some lower lumbar support here. And uh, you just sit a little lower. So my legs are a little more bent. My knees are bent more so than with that plush stock seat that came on this bike. It had me sitting up higher. 
my legs were a little more straightened out just wasn't comfortable for me overall so this is the factory seat I used to take this apart take all the covering off and cut out and shape the seat to be comfortable for me put comfort foam in it I don't even mess with that anymore I have an air hawk I put it right there and it makes any seat way way more comfortable and it conforms to my butt and makes it comfortable also run the sheepskin this thing's 10 15 years old and it's just a little bit cooler in the summer a little bit warmer in the winter the other thing is a backrest this is a really old backrest Hurley doesn't even make this design anymore um, I also have a different I have a grasshopper backrest on my soft tail but I have to have some sort of a backrest that I can lean against or my back just starts hurting no matter what no matter the what seat so um, this is what I do on my touring bikes the soft tail my soft tail seat I don't have to do anything to it it's perfect for me now what Mary did she had to she doesn't like the air hawk for whatever reason she had to recontour the seat on the soft tail and then I have a solo spring seat which is super comfortable on my sporty do you feel all cramped up on your bike so once you have your seat set up the next thing is getting your foot placement right whether you have floorboards or foot pegs the important there's three important aspects to your feet that is once you're sitting in your seat that you're comfortable with put your feet where they're comfortable don't look down and put your feet where your foot pegs are or where your floorboards are put your feet where they're comfortable and my feet I'm not even looking down my feet are comfortable right here and look I have them half on the floorboard and a part going up and so get your feet where they're comfortable a lot of people with floorboards end up getting floorboard extensions to get that floorboard up away from the primary and away from the exhaust and so you want to have them where they're comfortable you want to have them where they're secure those round pegs that Harley puts on most of their things when you start going at speed and whether it's the wind or hitting a bump people's feet bounce off of those right. that's not very secure so get some pegs that have some grip to them and then the last thing is you want to have multiple positions for your feet that usually includes some sort of a highway peg setup uh, or if you have pegs then just a heel rest that you put on there with the pegs but you want to have multiple positions for your feet so that you're comfortable the best way to find the most comfortable position for your feet just close your eyes put your feet up and wherever they land you know naturally that's going to be your most comfortable position but over time that may not be the comfortable position for the entire ride so multiple foot choices foot placement choices are key highway pegs uh, floorboard extensions uh, foot rests on your foot pegs are great high quality foot pegs go a long way poorly fitting foot pegs are going to vibrate they're going to bounce up and down and you're going to struggle to keep your feet on them so a tight fitting peg with an exceptional amount of grip goes a very long way in foot and leg comfort so with the floorboards on the touring bikes uh, i found that by putting the floorboard extensions it just pushes the floorboard out one inch is much much more comfortable than having the floorboard up really close just like uh, we talked about put your feet where they're comfortable and that's I'm not even looking down that's about where I'm comfortable right there and you can see that if this floorboard was an inch in a whole bunch of my foot wouldn't even be on the floorboard plus my heel would be against the hot primary on this side on the other side my heel would be against the exhaust so I use the floorboard extensions and then the other thing is I have highway pegs that I use just in everyday riding I mean that's normally where my foot is even when I'm quote unquote not using the highway peg my toe is usually on the heel rest that's just where it's most comfortable for me but then if I'm cruising or need to get some more air I can go like that I can go like this I can go like that so 
to me, I wouldn't even consider having a highway peg without it also having a heel rest. It just gives a lot more options. So, oh, and that's another position I ride in a lot. You see my heel is on the floorboard. My foot is on the peg and I don't know if you can see under there, I can feel the heel rest there giving some support to my foot. I also have the floorboard extensions on this bike. However, these extensions move the floorboards out one inch and forward one and a half inches. Because on the M8 Softtails, the floorboards are a little higher. Uh, we assume they were designed that way for more lean angle. The Twin Cam Softtails scraped the floorboards when you even looked at a curve. So the M8s, they brought the floorboards up, but that's a little uncomfortable. Most people, when they came out, they had that complaint that the floorboards were too high, your legs were too cramped. Well, when you move the floorboard forward, instead of your leg being cramped, knees bent, you can straighten your leg out a little further and it's still firmly planted on the entire floorboard. And I don't have highway pegs on this bike because the floorboards are just enough for me being in that more forward position. You can lay your foot this way, you can bring it flat, you can bring it back here, you can bring it out here. And you know, the, the rubber dampener just grips your boot really well. And I think on bikes with foot pegs, you subconsciously fight to keep your feet on there. You don't think about it, you just do it. So over time, your legs get a little tired. With the floorboards, especially with the extensions, there's much less fatigue. Just lay your foot on there and go. It's not gonna come off. You don't have wind fighting your legs. And just overall, you know, it's, it's more comfortable having multiple footing positions. And it, with the floorboards in the original position, one inch closer, your boot rested on that exhaust pipe the entire time. I mean, it, it just did. And you can see, you know, where the brake pedal is located in relation to the floorboard, how close they were before. And it was almost impossible to keep the heel of your boot off that exhaust pipe. So not only were you melting the heel of your shoe, you were adhering rubber to your chrome heat shield. On this side, the shifter assembly is also relocated with the floorboard. We have a floorboard extension that doesn't move the floorboards forward, only outwards an inch. And we have an optional spacer that where you can relocate the, the shifter assembly or leave it as is. One of the most overlooked aspects of foot placement is the air cleaner. If you have a bulky air cleaner, such as the stock or some of the aftermarket, you have to bow your leg out like that to reach around it. And so on this bike, I have the low profile 587 air cleaner. So that's not an issue for me. But if you do have a bulky air cleaner, you're not keen on replacing that. The floorboard extensions go a long way to get your leg away from that air cleaner. Your shoulders ache after an hour of riding. And the final corner of the triangle are the handlebars. Where your hands are placed is crucial to the comfort of your arms and shoulders and back. You know, if your arms, shoulders, and back aren't comfortable, it's gonna be a long ride. And you can do that by changing bars out, you can change the grips out, you can change the risers. They come in various lengths. Uh, you don't necessarily have to change the risers. We offer riser extensions. And you know, extensions will make your hand placement higher, but since your front forks are at an angle, it also brings your bars closer to you. And oftentimes that's just much more comfortable than reaching out to grab the bars. Yeah, it can make all the difference whether you're riding one or two hours or eight or ten hours a day. And I tell you, I've ridden some bikes that before I set them up, mm -hmm. after six or seven hours, I just get this short pain right between my shoulders. I'm going, what is going on here? And it's because the grips are not in a comfortable mm -hmm. position. And just like the seating and the foot position, everyone's gonna be a little different. So just close your eyes, hold your hands out, and wherever your hands fall, is gonna be pretty ballpark of where they need to be. They'll be the most comfortable in that position. Yeah, and so, and that's the real key, because you can think all you want, but your body's subconscious knows where yeah, it's comfortable. Yeah. And, and so, uh, oftentimes we hear our friends, like, man, get these apes, they're the most comfortable, get these beach bars, that, you have to find out for yourself. Yeah, and everybody's different, so, First thing is, get the seat you're comfortable with. Next, get your feet comfortable. Now you're sitting on the bike exactly how you're comfortable. I'm on a trike, so it's not on the kickstand. If you're doing it on a two-wheel bike, get someone to stand on the 
on either side of the front fender and hold that bike up straight for you. Put your feet, your back, everything exactly where you're comfortable. Close your eyes and put your hands up where they're comfortable. Everybody's different. So I put my hands up and they're right at my grips. But these are not the factory bars. The factory bars are like way up here. And just putting my arms up here just right now, it's hurting my shoulder. Imagine riding all day like yeah. that. So get comfortable in the seat you've already set up with the feet exactly where you're comfortable. And then just put your hands out where it's comfortable. And that's where your grip should be. Now these are the stock bars with the stock grips on the 2018 Deluxe. And I haven't changed anything. These are the stock risers. They already come stock with pullback to them. And that's one of the things I liked about this bike. And the only thing I've done and the only thing I felt that I've needed to do was tilt them back just a little. You know, I guess they're assembled and I don't know if they have, you know, standard placement, but these needed to be tilted back for me. And, you know, you close your eyes, you put your hands up there, they're comfortable just how they are. If I needed them to be a little further back, I could possibly put some extensions in here. Uh, but right now as they are, I like it. Now, chances are from the factory, it's not going to be where you want it to be. So don't settle for that. First, start by, you know, loosening your top clamp, tilt them back a little or possibly forward and get them, you know, right there in that comfort triangle. And then if you can't find the ideal placement, then start considering, you know, adding extensions or changing bars or different risers. So again, put your butt where it's comfortable. You got your comfortable seat. You got your feet comfortable. Close your eyes, put your hands up. And that's where my grips are. Now, when this bike was stock, the grips were somewhere around down in here somewhere. So you can imagine I'm sitting in my comfortable seat. I'm, my feet are where they like them. And I go to put my hands up and there's no bars there. They're way down here. So the way that you do it, when it's that far off and where you can't just adjust your handlebars to get them where you want, like Dwayne did on his, you put your hands where they're comfortable, open your eyes, you gotta have someone with you and they gotta measure the distance between where your hand is and where the factory grip is. Not only the distance this way, but also the distance this way. You know, it might be further forward, it might be further back, but it also might be in or out. Some people like to have their grips really close, some further out. And the angle, don't forget the angle. They make all different kind of angles for the grips, you know, and different wrists are going to be comfortable at different angles. So with this, we found out that simply these are the factory bars. And all we did, I needed it nine inches further this way. And I, I can't remember, it was one or two inches wider. Well, these bars already go wider the longer they are. So we just added a nine inch length to the factory bars right in here that put the grips where it's comfortable for me not just by going further back but they're also wider so i probably could have spent the time going to the dealership and saying look at i need my grips to be nine inches closer to me and two inches wider or three inches wider uh, and you know find me a set of handlebars that does that it was just easier to cut these, put nine inches in, and I just lucked out uh, that that's all I needed. So, and I can turn my handlebars all the way and they don't touch the tank. And that's a consideration when you're getting bars and adjusting bars is to make sure that they don't run into the tank. So that's the comfort triangle, getting the seat that's comfortable for you, getting your feet in a stable and secure and comfortable position and getting your handlebar grips where it's most comfortable for you. Yeah, if you complete that triangle, I can guarantee you, you can ride the bike twice as long. And at the end of the day, not be fatigued. Exactly. At the end of the day, be ready to party or whatever when you get to wherever you're going, instead of wanting to fall into bed or yeah, go straight the to hot bed. Yeah. Um, so, and there's a link below for a written report on the comfort triangle. Does your ass feel like you're riding on a brick? Did you ride all day 
only to realize, oh, I have to ride back home. You might be eligible for compensation. Have you spent 20? Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Have you spent 10, 20, 30, 40, even $50,000 on your Harley? And now you're concerned about it running reliably and protecting your investment? We're gonna have a multi-part series. Did you buy tassels instead of an oil cooler? If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button. Hit that notification bell so you'll be updated when our new video comes out. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We'd appreciate that. And you all ride safe out there.